Hello fellow plot questers, today we got the Moral Maxims Reflections by Rushfield. I don't know how to say that name. And uh, let's get right into it. So, uh, this is not a book, right? This is, it's, like a, it's like a list of things. And I want to pick a couple of these that I really, really like, and I'm going to talk about them. So the first one I want to talk about is self-love. And self-love is a really commonly debated topic within the maxims from what i've read anyway and uh, the fourth one is where it kind of starts and it says self-love is more cunning than the most cunning man in the world and yeah that sounds cool and all that but let's take a deeper look into it i'm only going to look at two or three so self-love right we self-love isn't necessarily a negative thing right like if we love ourselves then that's good but i think what this is talking about is self-love bordering narcissism because if self-love is taken to the extreme, like literally anything, it can be dangerous. You start to justify everything that you do within your mind, whether it is good or bad, and it leads to victimization. But I think this is also saying that self-love in general can be dangerous in any kind of situation, even if you're not, you know, a developing narcissist. Because, for example, if you, let's say you're a completely normal person, okay? You're a completely normal person and you're on a boat and you got three or four people on the boat, and you go. And then on the boat, uh, there's a shark or a monster or something that appears and starts hunting them down. And you sacrifice two of your crewmates to escape out into the sea, and you survive. In that situation, of course, there's going to be a lot of guilt, and you do have to forgive yourself eventually. But self-love might do some dangerous victimization and justification. Of course, I'm not saying that the man should not get over the thing, but he should also be able to look at his own faults and objectively think about how it's bad. And in some ways, it is g correct that he should be tortured by it to some extent. And then after thinking about it and lulling over it for some period of time, then slowly he can find ways to move on. However, if self-love is too strong, well, I, I'm trying to talk about self-love in almost a negative manner, which is not. But I'm trying to say that if your self-love is just telling you, like, it's okay, you have to do it to survive, it's okay because of this, it's okay because of this, it is so cunning, it can think of a thousand different reasons why the reason why you're feeling guilty or bad is wrong, because you're you, and yeah. And that is the most dangerous thing that any person can go through, tricking yourself into thinking that you're something that you're not. And of course, I'm not saying like I know who I am or I, I haven't gotten over my teenage angsty identity crisis yet, so no. But to some extent, we got to be more self-aware of our self-love. And there was no pun intended there, but yes. And again, I got to emphasize before I move on, self-love isn't a negative thing. It is very, very good. You should have self-love within yourself. Otherwise, you'll be suicidal. However, I'm saying that self-love, you got to be very aware of your self-love and aware of the bias within yourself when you, when you try to make objective decisions. And that's what I'm trying to say. The next one is the sixth one. And this is something that I'm really passionate about, pun intended, because this one is called, Passion often renders the most clever man a fool, and even sometimes renders the most foolish man clever. Now, Okay, I'm personally, uh, most people around me would probably say, I'm a passionate person. Like, I'm very, very vocal and very, very obsessed and very, very passionate about things that I like. This includes writing, this includes playing video games, this includes debating, etc, etc. Like, I'm very passionate about the things I do. Because I really, truly believe in myself and the fact that I really like doing the things I like doing. And that's good, right? But also, passion, like this thing says, can really make a really clever guy a complete idiot and can make a really, really not so clever guy a complete genius. Why is that? Because let's say, let's say your passion is domination or <laughs> become the ruler of the world. Let's say that's your passion, okay? I know, I know it's a stupid example, but let's say, let's say that's, the, that's the current, your passion. And you might be the smartest man in the world with an IQ that doubles Einstein's. And you're, you're, really, you're really passionate about taking over the world. I know, this sounds like a Disney villain, that's the point. And you start to take over the world. And slowly but surely, you develop this logic for yourself using that passion. 
and inside of yourself you keep justifying and changing and making this logic for yourself that's ideal for yourself that when you objectively look at it the second you objectively look at it it's wrong but you simply keep saying that again and again to yourself until you believe it and now this can obviously be put in a really positive manner like for example I'm passionate about my book, so I tell myself every day I can publish, I can do it, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna work hard. Like, that's good, right? So, like, like I'm an idiot, okay? I'm, I'm a crackhead, I, I kind of work in the most inefficient ways possible, and yeah, I just talk really well, that's the only thing I'm good at. But the thing is, because of the passion that I had for writing, I got moderately better at writing and started to really develop my skills, right? And that's good passion. But again, this can cut the complete adverse effect of you're convincing yourself about something that is objectively wrong, but you're not looking at it because your passion is blinding you, you're blinding you to the bad things that your passion is bringing. And that, I guess, in my opinion, is what Rochefeld is trying to say within this, within this love, within this lovely thing. And I don't... Okay, I'm probably going to end it off here because, okay, I know I only talked about two maxims, right? But these maxims are called self-reflections or reflections of the self. Of, yeah. And it's just, I think the point of the maxims is not for me to go again and go, oh, number one means this, 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 this. Number two means this, 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 this for everything. Or just give the general summary on the reflections and trying to make you do this. Because honestly, I think that's stupid. The reason why this is called the reflections, well, it's second name anyway, the other name is Moral Maxims, is because you need to go over these, these really short, by the way, really short sentences, slowly but surely, thinking about how each of them affect you, and slowly calibrating with your mind what they mean to you, to you specifically. And I, I just rambled today about what these, what two very cool Moral Maxims within the list, means to me but that's subjective it's subjective as crap there is no way i can go this is gonna be true for every single person in the world like ain't no way because humans are very unique creatures so what i'm trying to get at is you should read the maxims and slowly go over each thing and try to think about what they mean to you and how you analyze it and Maybe, maybe you need a good reflection session on how you act and how you think. Maybe that's the point. You know what I mean? So, so again, that's why I'll end it off here. It is The Moral Maxims by Russia Field. And I would highly recommend reading everything, like pretty much everything. Or even just like the first 20, for example, if you don't have time. Like it's so good. It is so interesting. And it really makes you reflect. And that's, what it's, that's the whole point of the book. And like always, your plot quester, Aaron, plot, Aaron the plot quester, we had a really interesting book today. 10 out of 10, and I hope you all find it helpful. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.